his role in that event and what his reaction is to the actual vigilante out there? I can't really talk very much about the crossover. I think that's uh, going to be uh, a, uh, a world unto itself. It's such a huge, it was such a huge undertaking. Um, I think um, <coughs> we'll, we'll let the crossover deal with itself when it comes to it. Can you talk more just about sort of the logistics of working with all these other shows and as an actor, sort of the challenge of this multi crossover story without the plot itself, just the technicality of logistics? Um, just seeing all those trailers, <laughs> there was, I mean, there were like four different shows and. Um, it was, it, I mean, an amazing achievement, and looking forward to seeing what they, what, how they pull it off and, and, um, and, and bringing it together. I think, uh, you know, I think, and it's fun, it's fun working with other, it's fun working with actors from different shows who are already established. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that all comes together. Logistically, I think, was, I know Melissa was just chatting. I mean, she's one of the hardest working actresses I know. Um, so doing doing five and you know, four days on on the crossover and then coming to us for half a day and I mean she was she was exhausted. But it's logistically I think uh, it's a crazy crazy undertaking but uh, hopefully we pull it off. Um, we see that Monel kinda tries to take, take a job as an intern and doesn't do it so well and um, just sort of curious from your character's standpoint I mean, how's he feeling about you know, all these aliens that are kind of, he can't contain them all in, you know, in his facility and they're all getting out there. Does he feel like the genie is just never going to get back in the bottle and, and having all these guys out there is just bad news for him? I think, this, I think it's interesting, but I do think Hank does have a, a, a maybe a 30, 40% um, percent, uh, I think he's right, 30% in, in, in that there are bad aliens out there, but I think he's becoming more comfortable with the idea of of there being just more and more visitors, and I think he's going to have to, I think going in, walking into the alien bar that time, it's nice to, it's nice to play with, with, with the notion that he's becoming more comfortable with his alien self. Um, we, we play, I play with the, the idea that he's been suppressing the alien part of himself for so long he's almost forgotten he's almost forgotten that alien part of himself so I think um, I think this season Hank is coming to terms with not just his, alien, his own alien self but with the fact that there are other aliens out there some good um, who um, are just trying to live a peaceful life uh, not all aliens are bad aliens I think so I think um, I think he's kind of getting used to the idea that there are more and more um, aliens living amongst us and doing so relatively without struggle or trouble. Um, what's, what's wonderful about it is that he's, uh, he's obviously conflicted because uh, he, he likes it and um, reminds him of home. So it's a bit, it's a bit uh, of a kind of double-edged sword, I think he's both, I think he's struggling with the, with the idea that he um, could like a white Martian. Uh, it's not something that he's been used to. And having having a sympathetic white Martian pretty much turns his uh, world upside down. Because that's just not, if you don't hate what you, you know, it, I, think there's, I think I have a line coming up where I say, you, know, I, you define yourself by your, by your hatred. And, um, if I've you know, spent all this time painting white marshals, that's, that's the kind of, that's what I do. So without that, I think it could be, it could be a, a, perhaps feel a little, a little lost, because he's just grown up. Um, Last we saw him, he said to Madonna he was going to back off a little bit, because he was very aggressively pursuing her in the episode. <laughs> he wanted to bond, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it develops, I mean, they get close, and I think she gets herself into a very uh, difficult position because um, obviously the closer, we, the closer we get, the 
the closer I get to that sequence. So, uh, there's, a, there's an attraction, but also she's just very wary of me finding out. So, um, yeah, there's some nice, there's some nice different levels going on. <laughs> Is there any chance the real Hank Henshaw might still be alive and out there somewhere? There's always a chance. Um, um, it'd, be, it'd be fun to play with him, I quite like him. Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely a chance, and um, what's the space, you never know. He has become a real, or yeah, is a real father figure for both um, Kara and Alex. Can you tease any um, storylines or moments that might be coming up um, in either of those relationships? Um, it's, it's quite difficult in, in, in this season because we we and also the scripts I think are exploring our individual um, characters, which I think is great. I mean, uh, <coughs> Alex is exploring her her own kind of self, and that's wonderful. Um, and there was a, there was a moment in Monday's episode where you know he says, which was a pretty important moment for us as well as actors, but where I say, you know, I'm I'm really happy to have you in my life, but with the gun, there's a chance for me to live how I was meant to live, which is almost like, you know, kind of, we, we almost akin, put, it, put it akin to like a father saying, you know, I'm divorcing your mom, not that I don't love her, I love you, know, I don't, not that I don't love you, but I just have to find something else. It's, 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 a, it's a, it just what we wanted to just kind of lay the groundwork that, although, yes, it's great that, their father, that he's their father figure and that he, he's almost, almost sorry, the daughters, that there's a part of there's a part of even that relationship that doesn't fulfil John Jones's emptiness, his loneliness, which is obviously the fact that he doesn't have his wife, doesn't have his children. So there's still an element of loneliness there. So I'm not I'm, I'm not sure how we're going. There's always I think every episode is a moment where the three of us are together. But um, I think we're trying to explore each, individual characters as well this season. So. Do you think that as more people have become aware of his true nature? that that's actually, in a way, forced him to deal with that loneliness because uh, he doesn't have kind of masquerading as human to hide behind anymore? Yeah, I mean, that's what this, I think, this, what this whole season really is about. Is, is, and it's really funny because we still refer to him as Hack. And um, it's the most bizarre part to play because I'm pretending to be somebody that I'm not. And um, it's, it's a little strange to... To, to, to play the character, but um, it's almost as if everyone's getting used to Jean Jones. Even Jean Jones is getting used to Jean Jones um, and being, being himself. Uh, Hank isn't too, too uh, comfortable with vigilantes, but um, I, think he's so, I, I think he might be quite impressed, particularly with Wynn. I think he's very impressed with Wynn anyway. Um, I think somebody on Twitter called me his. Alien, his, his alien dad. Um, so so I, I think it's really nice having Jeremy in the video. It gives Hank a chance to play lighter and notes, and, and also I think it gives Jeremy a, a great opportunity to play play with his expertise more than he did what he was at Capcom. Um, so I think he'd be quite impressed with him. So um, I'm looking forward to that sequence coming. You see Kara and, and Alex really dealing with this idea that Jeremiah is still alive and uh, that there's a possibility that he could be rescued, but we haven't really seen a lot of John dealing with this. So how, how would you say he's feeling about the search for Jeremiah and how con much it's consuming Alex? Um, yeah, well, my whole goal has been to look after these two girls, I suppose. Uh, so I think the notion of the notion of him being alive, I think, would be I say, I say a burden lifted, but I think it would, I think again it, it would free free up Jean from his from you know from these kind of he's got these kind of over overarching kind of themes of his life, which is you know, protect the girls, protect Earth. And there's never anything of look after Jean Jean. There's never anything of look after who you are, and I, I, I think maybe one day he'll come to that point where we will realize that maybe he has to go back to Mars. Although in the comic books he goes back to Mars and finds his brother or something like that. So I think at some point he's going to have to deal with 
with uh, his own loneliness and, uh, and, and kind of find a way of, of, um, of dealing with that. You had talked about straining uh, Melissa because she had to run through the crossover. Uh, obviously, this ensemble is both very talented and has a lot of their own plots going on. Could we see an episode or two that really lets you guys shine a little bit more to give her a break? She would love that. <laughs> I think she would love that. Um, maybe, on, yeah, maybe down the line, you know, there's, there's opportunities for that. Um, you know, the show is called Supergirl, so I suppose you need Supergirl in the show. Um, but I think it would be um, it would be exciting for the audience. I mean, we've got a long way as well, so there's a um, long way to go, hopefully. Um, hopefully we can we can give her a rest and explore different different characters. And I know I know I'd certainly like to explore more of John Jones. So um, again, watch this space and let's see what comes up.